What is the definition of a winning portfolio? What are the correct altcoins to hodl and how much of each? Well, that answer is different for everybody based on a variety of factors. But today I'm going to break down my current portfolio. What am I holding the most of and why? So this is an episode you surely don't want to miss. So don't, because it's time for Chico Crypto. Are you guys ready for this content? Many people have been asking for it and waiting for it for years. And now it's time to reveal my current portfolio. Like mentioned in the intro, there are many factors to creating the perfect portfolio. Which country do you live in? Are you day trading or are you holding for the long term? What sectors of crypto get you excited? And so on and so forth. So my portfolio may not be the best for you, but this is what I'm accumulating based on the answers to the above questions and how they pertain to me. So what is my number one hodl? Well, I covered this just last week, and that is that stinky, stinky chain lanky. All the way back in February of 2019, I made a move that would change my investing life. I sold my bag of NEO and decided to put a majority of that into Chainlink. Chainlink was just 45 cents back then, and today it's nearly $15. That's a 32X, and I've been holding every single one of those since that trade, and actually been accumulating more as time has gone by. Chainlink today makes up about 15% of my current portfolio. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on the why with Chainlink because I talked about it many times before and just last week. But one thing I need to mention is, I believe after Bitcoin and Ethereum, Chainlink will be the next coin to get an ETF. So what is the number two crypto within my portfolio? Well, this one may come as a surprise for some, but for many not. That coin is the passive income all-star GMX. When did I first invest into GMX? Well, this happened at the end of the last bull run in August 2021. I invested right before this live stream. And here's what I said back then. But GMX is the perpetual on Arbitrum. So this is going to do well. I would expect it to rank upwards with perpetual eventually i predicted gmx would surge just like perpetual breaking into the top 150 coins and this is exactly what has happened checking out the gmx price tracking of it doesn't even go back to when i first covered it in august of 21 but i remember it was well below five dollars i bought gmx at around two bucks that would mean with today's price of over $53, I've hit an over 25x. I've never sold any GMX, and I've been using my real yield staking rewards, the passive income of ETH, to accumulate more GMX, a nice little flywheel effect that has earned the token a 13% position in my portfolio. So why GMX? Well, lately there has been some turbulent times with GMX due to the basket of competitors coming to try and take users and volume. But GMX has stood the test of time, standing strong, and brushed off these attacks. This can be seen from total fees over the past 90 days for different DeFi derivative DEXs, a measure of a protocol's use, especially derivative DEXs. GMX is number one, DYDX is number two, Synthetix is number three, and the new competitors that came to Vampire Attack, not doing so great, like Vertex and more. Then you even have the derivative king, Arthur Hayes, loving what he's seeing from GMX, tweeting just a few days ago, nom nom nom, I love eating those trading fees during volatile markets. 
Me too, King Arthur. This is a token I'm hodling for the long term due to the passive income you receive by just holding and staking it. What about my next hodl? What about my number three and number four? Well, this is a move I recommend to any crypto investor. Get yourself a good stack of the only crypto assets that have a clear path to acceptance across the globe by the people and by governments. There are only two assets that fit this bill, and that is Bitcoin and Ethereum. Which of the two do I hodl the most of, Bitcoin or ETH? Which asset is my number three hodl? Well, my friends, this is gonna shock some people. It isn't Bitcoin, but it is Ethereum. Ethereum currently makes up 12% of my portfolio. So why ETH over BTC? Well, for one, I believe Ethereum is going to become the settlement layer for all of finance in the future. What do I mean by this? Well, in the future, there is going to be a multitude of blockchains, both public and private, operating alongside and in cooperation with each other to suit the needs of all the different types of uses. Although just one blockchain will serve as a global settlement layer for all the data transactions from the blockchains, no matter which blockchain they occur on. This blockchain settlement layer provides an anchor for the ecosystem, establishing undeniable security and objective finality should anything happen on a different blockchain. One blockchain will be the root chain for the world. And from what I'm seeing, this is Ethereum. Ethereum is the center of the blockchain world right now. Every other protocol, layer one or layer zero, has a bridge to and from Ethereum. And if they don't, they are dead in the water. And the same can be said about the world of private blockchains. If any enterprise building a blockchain or blockchain-based app, they are likely using Ethereum or connecting to Ethereum in some form. For example, JP Morgan Onyx. It's a private fork of Ethereum. And in their docs, they even talk about ENS, Ethereum Name Service. And you know, if it's private enterprise blockchain, it's going to be somehow related to ETH. ETH will be the global settlement layer. So that's why I hodl it and hodl it strong. So that means Bitcoin is my number four hodl. It's not too far behind Ethereum and makes up 10% of my portfolio. So why do I hold so much Bitcoin? Well, it is the next iteration of gold. It's the next dominant store of value. Eventually, this will be how a majority of the world stores their value for the long term. And this includes countries. Like I've said since I started my channel and BTC was under 1K, eventually Bitcoin will be worth $1 million per BTC. But who's next? Who is my number five hodl? Well, this one is the first new one since the last time I did a portfolio update over two years ago. It's actually a coin I invested in just a short eight months ago. And due to its explosion, it's quickly moved up in my portfolio. That coin is the first successful token on Bitcoin. It's Ordi. I first covered Ordi in early May last year before anyone else, and here is what I said. Obviously, Ordi took inspiration from Bitcoin with a 21 million max token cap. And since this is the first token ever created on Bitcoin, in my opinion, it's the son of BTC. It's BTC's Jesus, and its value is immeasurable. Guess what the price was back then? From the video we can see, it was $3.42. Although I got my first buy in the day before at a lower price of $2.84. Checking out the Ordi price today, it's nearly 72 bucks. That means it's an over 24X I got. And that is why Ordi makes up 8% of my portfolio today. 
So why Ordi? Well, like in that bid when I first talked about it, it is the first token on Bitcoin. It's Bitcoin's Jesus. Its value will be immense. If BTC hits somewhere between 150K to 200K this bull cycle, I wouldn't doubt Ordi to be between $1,500 to $2,000 per coin. So who is my number six hodl? Well, this one is also a new coin who wasn't a part of my portfolio two years ago. That is the cryptocurrency Caspa. Now, I made a bold prediction about mining hash power in September of 2022 before Ethereum turned off proof of work mining and went full on proof of stake. Is there a lower cap coin who could be in a position to break out and swallow up a ton of hash power? Well, yes, there is. And it even almost has a higher hash rate than Ethereum Classic, Flux, and Ergo combined. This is Caspa. Yep, I predicted Caspa to be the all-star to suck up a majority of Ethereum's mining hash power and surge up in the cryptocurrency rankings. From that video, we can see that the price was about 0.00265 of a dollar, all the way down in rank 507. Well, as we can see today, Caspa is ranked number 40 with a price of over 11 cents, a whopping 42x. Unfortunately, I didn't go extremely heavy, but heavy enough to make the gains put KAS as my number six hodl and be 7% of my portfolio. But why Caspa? Well, it's a true decentralized digital currency designed to stand the test of time and have the performance to meet the growing needs of this world. Caspa is working on a massive update to their protocol called Dagnite. This tweet from Captain Sat explains it well. They say, Dagnite perfects the consensus layer as fast as the internet allows. As internet speeds get faster, so does Caspa. As hardware improves, so does Caspa. Any attacks of different sizes, Dagnite auto adjusts too. Future proof. The future of Caspa looks bright, but what is my number seven hodl? Well, this crypto I got early into and it exploded last bull run, and I believe it will do it again. That altcoin is Illuvium. Now, I was able to get into the Alluvium presale, meaning I didn't buy it when it was trading on the open markets. Through this presale, I got ILV for about $3 per token. Checking out the price today, Alluvium is over $86. That means I scored nearly a 28X. This makes Alluvium make up 6% of my portfolio today. But why ILV? Well, gaming is one of blockchain and NFT's biggest use cases, and having at least one token in your portfolio who has a good chance of breaking into the mainstream of gaming isn't a bad idea. Alluvium is already on the path to mainstream adoption. They are the only blockchain game able to be purchased within the Epic Game stores. If you didn't know, Epic is one of the largest gaming companies in the world. They're the ones behind Fortnite and more. Now, if you're gonna look at the Alluvium price and Alluvium breaks into the mainstream and reclaims its old all-time high of 1,911 bucks, which I believe is 100% possible, that would be an over 21X from the current price. Likely ILV will be moving up in my portfolio because of this. So what are my number eight and number nine hodls? Well, both of these make up about 5% of my portfolio and they are critical pieces to Ethereum and its future. These coins are Rocket Pool and Gnosis. Now, if you didn't know, I've been a Rocket Pool bull for a long time and even have been running my own mini pool, staking my RPL. 
And then for Gnosis, if you didn't know, Gnosis merged with XDI. Thus, if you were an XDI fan and held some like me, you were a bull on XDI, you were able to convert it into GNO. Now, both of these coins I'm staking for the long term, and they are major pieces to Ethereum decentralization and the technical development of ETH. The final 19% of my portfolio is made up of a bunch of altcoins and NFTs. Some of the bigger hodls in this basket include Polkadot, Kusama, Synthetics, Trump NFTs, Ohm, Tectum, Good, and so much more. I'm basically hodling all of my calls from in the past I haven't sold. Cheers viewers, I'll see you next time. The most trustless name in